Before he ever picked up a lightsaber, Iman Esfandi was firing away precision strikes with a very different implement. From showing up in random commercials to throwing down at slam poetry shows, here's what you didn't know about the Ahsoka star. Iman Esfandi grew up in the small Texas border city of Laredo, which is known for having the highest proportion of Hispanic Americans of any city in the United States outside of Puerto Rico. This lack of ethnic diversity proved challenging for Esfandi whose mother hails from Ecuador and whose father comes from Iran. As he explained to the Daily Texan in 2022, I was around zero Persian people my whole life, mostly around Mexican and Caucasian people. Texas Caucasian people can be really rough, especially the years I was growing up. Very country, homophobic, Islamophobic, and brutal. And in an interview with Flaunt, as Fandi recalled, I grew up with the repercussions of 9-11 all throughout my childhood. When I was younger, it wasn't as noticeable. But by the time I was in high school, I could better see the microaggressions that my being half Persian or my father being from Iran would incite. Esfandi would later utilize this racism to help fuel his career. Esfandi's parents have been business owners in Laredo for most of their son's life. He spent a considerable amount of his childhood in the family shop and even hoped to one day follow in their footsteps. So he got an associate's degree from his hometown school of Laredo College, and then he later graduated from the University of Texas with a bachelor's in economics, with the expectation of running a business similar to his parents' shop. But then he changed his focus when he discovered a passion for film and art. As he recalled to shout out LA in 2021, I wasn't taught how to express myself, didn't have any examples of how to become an artist. I'm grateful though, for it's the stark contrast of my upbringing to my current lifestyle. It's humbling and empowering to remind myself that I started from nothing and wasn't handed things on a silver platter. There was yet another completely different life trajectory that Asfandi almost ended up on, as he was once considered to be a bit of a tennis prodigy. He took up the sport at the age of 13 and spent his high school senior year practicing at the John Newcomb Tennis Academy in New Braunfels, Texas. He was even at one point ranked in the top five in the country while playing collegiate tennis at Laredo College. Esfandi kept playing for years, and he eventually became a mentor and an instructor for tennis prospects of all ages, as recently as 2020. His athletic background came in handy in 2021, when he landed a small role in the movie King Richard, which tells the story of Richard Williams, father of the legendary Venus and Serena. This guy Richard Williams keeps calling, it's like the 10th time in a row. Esfandi remains obsessed with the game, as he regularly shares highlights of his practices and matches on Instagram. With a sports background and a fine education, it wasn't exactly the obvious choice for Iman Esfandi to dive headfirst into acting, but he found his own direction in life by taking a unique route. As he explained to Voyage LA in 2019, I had been conducting impromptu interviews at coffee shops around Austin with anyone who was interested in starting up a conversation. It was my way to research different life paths without having to experience them myself. As Fandi eventually took his project to a local acting workshop, as he recalled, I did in fact meet people who had drastically changed their life paths. But another interesting thing also happened. I ended up volunteering to work through a couple of scenes. As Fandi impressed the casting directors who were operating the workshop and was encouraged to find a manager and pursue an acting career. So he started attending workshops around Austin and landed some substantial roles in student projects and short films before fully committing by making the move to Los Angeles in 2018. Like plenty of other actors, Iman Asfandi got his start on screen with some TV commercial gigs. Impressively enough, he landed his first national televised campaign shortly after attending his first acting workshop. Since then, Asfandi has managed to book a veritable slew of ads for the likes of such companies as Amazon, Bose, and H&R Block. One spot for L.L. Bean features him sleeping on top of a ladder of hammocks as he wishes his camping mates a good morning. He also appeared in Coca-Cola's Food Feud campaign which features people making their cases for various meals as the optimal thing to eat while watching football. As Fandi plays a guy who stumps for a certain type of iconic sandwich. Dude, subs. For many actors, it's a natural evolution to one day sit in the director's chair and run the show behind the camera. Iman Fandi has actually already made this transition, as he's an award-winning director of short films. His first and most notable stint as a director came as a passion project alongside his childhood friend Isaac Gaza. Gaza approached Esfandi about helping him produce an absurdist comedy short titled Pepito. With Gaza writing and starring, he invited Esfandi to be the director. So Esfandi taught himself how to direct by devouring a crash course of YouTube videos, and then he took the helm for the three-day shoot. To their surprise, Pepito went on to be selected as a winner of the Latinx Short Film Festival in 2019, and it also earned a nationwide distribution deal on HBO platforms. 
as Fandi followed up that triumph by directing another short film called 120, which premiered at the Cannes Short Film Corner. Since then, though, he's pretty much abandoned the director's chair, as he's chosen instead to focus on his acting and other creative pursuits. The COVID-19 pandemic left a huge percentage of the world's population to their own devices while they were locked up in quarantine. Iman Asfandi decided to use this isolation to his advantage by pursuing artistic outlets beyond filmmaking. This including discovering a love for slam poetry. Slam poetry involves performing an original piece in front of an audience that's encouraged to participate with finger snaps or words of affirmation. This eccentric genre of live entertainment is fitting for someone like Asfandi as it's often treated as a highly emotional monologue that relies on the performer's individual style. He's continued to practice this unique art form, including in March 2023, when he shared an Instagram reel of himself performing a rendition of his poem, I'm Tired. You good? Hey, you good? It was a natural progression for Asfandi to adapt his passions for poetry and performing into a music career. Under the stage name of Dragon Wolf, he spent much of his time in quarantine learning everything he could about producing his own songs. As he explained to the Laredo Morning Times in 2023, I learned so much about music over the course of a year. I realized I want to do this all the way and forever. As Fardy released his first Dragon Wolf EP in September 2020, though he eventually decided to make it no longer available. As he explained, I took a more professional approach to learning it all, or carving out my style and figuring out what it is I wanted to do with the music. As Fandi then released the new single, You're Perfect in Every Way, and he's since followed that up with three albums, A Dragon Wolf Summer, La Vie en Ver, and La Sagrada Familia. As Fandi has looked back on his musical journey by reflecting, it was a lot of self and inner work and discovery and expression. It broke through a bunch of barriers of fear, anxiety, and insecurities, and eradicated all that. Working on something as big as Ahsoka is sure to help Asfandi land himself some higher-profile projects in the near future, but he's actually already built himself a pretty solid filmography. His on-screen credits date back to 2017, when he starred in an assortment of short films with names like Death by Script and Mother of the Golds. By 2018, Asfandi hooked up with fellow Star Wars veteran Robert Rodriguez. The actor starred in Rodriguez's low-budget flick Red Eleven, which had its world premiere at the 2019 South by Southwest Film Festival. As Fandi then made his silver screen debut in 2021's King Richard, before taking a more substantial role in 2022's The Inspection. It was a part that really hit close to home, as he played a Muslim-American man recruited into the Marines during the height of post-9-11 Islamophobia. Have been convicted of a felon? Are you communist? As impressive as As Fandi's rise through the Hollywood ranks has been, he still faced some adversity, particularly when it comes to the types of roles he gets offers for. Since moving to Los Angeles in 2018, he's gone out on plenty of auditions. Unfortunately, the parts that he generally gets the most calls for are stereotypical and frequently racist characters that seem to be stuck on his Iranian heritage. As he noted to the Daily Texan in 2022, I'm not going to audition for something that's offensive. I'm not perfect for a role because I'm brown. I'm not perfect for that because I can play this side character. I'm perfect for real characters because I'm a real person. As Fandi also pointed out that his role in The Inspection was a good example of the sort of character he prefers to play. In that film, he was able to represent both his Persian background and his Ecuadorian heritage. Meanwhile, the part also allowed him to explore and confront much of the racism that he's endured throughout his life. It's difficult for Asfandi to ignore how meteorically his career has taken off by playing a fan-favorite character in one of the world's biggest franchises. But that doesn't mean that this development is a total surprise to him. He credits the power of manifestation as a major reason for his success. It's also a huge influence on his music, as the power of belief has helped him turn his dreams into reality. As he explained to the Laredo Morning Times, I'm rapping from a place in the future that I'm adopting the feeling of and calling that into my life. I dropped a Dragon Wolf Summer, and it's very flex rap and extravagant. I'm flexing, and that's when I booked Star Wars. It doesn't get more obvious that these concepts work. As Fandi also noted, I know how the universe works on a spiritual level, and I know I can get a hold of it on a physical, tangible level. If anything, at the end of this whole thing, I'll be living proof, and these songs will be my retrospect. It's no secret that the Star Wars fandom can be quite finicky when new characters or new versions of established characters enter the franchise. All you have to do is go anywhere on the internet where Star Wars fans gather to understand how difficult they can be to please. But plenty of viewers seem to be embracing Asfandi as a live-action choice for beloved Rebels hero Ezra Bridger. So it might be a little surprising to learn that Asfandi had some serious competition during the casting process. 
Many actors expressed interest in the role for Ahsoka, and one of the leading names rumored for the part was the lead of the live-action Aladdin, Mina Masood. Masood even quoted Ezra on an Instagram post back in 2021, which fueled speculation that he was close to nabbing the part. Masood inevitably had to address the casting decision when it was announced that Asfandi won the part. In a since-deleted tweet, he wrote, Glad the rumors will stop now. Never really had a fair shot at it, unfortunately. Just wasn't meant for me, I guess. Can't deny the dude looks exactly like Ezra. It all seems to have worked out for the best, as Asfandi is flourishing in the role leading to rumors that Ezra Bridger may get his very own Disney Plus series in the near future.